Welcome back, developers. Jeff here. We spent a lot of time talking about Cloud Foundry, but today I'm joined by Sharat of the Stackdriver team, who promises to show us how to debug our production applications with Google Stackdriver. Howdy, Jeff. Howdy, Sharat. Can you tell me a bit about Stackdriver? Of course. So Stackdriver is a suite of uh, logging, monitoring, and other diagnostic tools, which is primarily targeted towards developers who are building and running their applications in the cloud. Uh, it it is uh, it's designed to alert developers of problems occurring in production and easily diagnose the root cause of the problems. Oh, sounds great. Uh, so the, one good way to experience Stackdriver is by actually using the tools. So why don't I just give a quick whirlwind demo of uh, Stackdriver diagnostic tools? All right, let's dive in. All right. So let me open up an application here that I've got running on the Google Cloud platform. And um, let's start with um, logging, right? So every developer, um, of course, spends time looking at logs. And what you would see here is, uh, is, is a fairly simple, straightforward log viewer. And this log viewer has, uh, of course, you can view logs as, as they get generated by mm -hmm. the application. But we have added a few more things, like the ability to filter by label or do text search. Um, mm -hmm. And we can do things like log-based metrics. We can export these logs to BigQuery. And then you have the whole power of BigQuery, the ability to slice and dice and pivot the data in any which way you want mm -hmm. available. And all of this, the export to BigQuery, can happen in just a couple of clicks. Um, but, but one thing that we observed was while uh, developers and engineers take comfort in the fact that there is data in logs, they really don't like wallowing in it. Right. They don't like spending time, like, you know, uh, you, could, you could easily spend days looking at the logs, trying to find that one specific issue that's occurring in production. So with that in mind, what we did was we said, uh, we, we, can, we can probably do a better job of pre-processing these logs as they come in. And so we, we created um, error reporting. And the best way to think of error reporting is um, it's, it's a snapshot. It's a single snapshot of everything that's happening in your application uh, represented on one page. We take all the logs that's generated, scan through each of them in near real time, and then we intelligently group these uh, into different error buckets. Mm -hmm. um, and for each of those error buckets, we provide some information, like how often it's occurring, a quick histogram of uh, how frequently it occurs, um, and, 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 uh, and, and how severe the uh, issue is. Uh, when it was first seen, when it was last seen, we have, we have the ability to slice these error groups by time or by versions uh, and by the application itself. And and you can of course um, have this. Uh, you can click on this auto reload that allows you to effectively keep getting the stream of uh, information be updated in near real time. Wow! You can click on any of these. Let's so let's go ahead and click on one of these uh, error groups here. And what you see here, as you would expect, is every single instance of that error group um, captured in this view. So you can drill into any of those instances of errors within this error group. Um, in addition to, of course, showing you the occurrences as we described and when it was first and last seen, we give you a more detailed histogram of where this is occurring. Mm -hmm. And we capture this tag trace. The view that most uh, engineers are used to is to basically look at this um, this this uh, this this mind-numbing view of the stack trace. Right? Yeah. I mean, my uh, my eyes glaze when it glaze over whenever <laughs> I look at this. Um, so what we try to do is we scan through every one of these uh, stack traces, and we try to surface up what we believe is the most relevant portion of that entire stack trace. You can always view the whole thing by clicking on the show all, but the past view is meant to represent where what we believe is the most relevant section where we believe the problem is occurring, the root, where, where we believe the, 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 is the exact source of the problem. Mm -hmm. So with that, um, uh, with that in mind, uh, with, with all of this, what you have is uh, developers can get a snapshot very quickly, drill into the snapshot at the specific instance where the error is occurring, and have some clues on where the exact source of that error. So if we had left it at that, you can imagine a developer coming to the error reporting page going uh, to the logs and trying to understand the root cause. So the common next steps we observed is that developers would then try to reproduce that problem that's occurring in production on a separate dev box, on a, on a, on a separate test box. And then they would go and insert some breakpoints mm -hmm. and then inspect the application state to try to understand where the problem could be exactly occurring, trying to find the root cause of the problem. 
And when they believe that they found the root cause, what developers would tend to do is to write some more code and in insert some logs and then try to make sure that validate that same hy uh, the hypothesis in production. Mm -hmm. And, and so they would, that would require the developers to write some code, redeploy the entire application, wait for the problem to occur, and then yeah. bingo, you would see the logs and say, now I'm sure that I've found the root cause. Let me go write the lines to go fix the problem. Yeah, a few but hours later, right? It's a few hours later. Some places it takes a few days later because sure. the problems could be difficult. I mean, might occur at, at different places. So if they, especially if you think of scenarios where developers have rolled out only one code to only one section of the uh, instances and mm -hmm. not all because... Uh, it, it might have some impact to the uh, application running in production itself. Mm -hmm. So, so what we did was we we started asking ourselves some basic questions. Um, could we capture the application state in production when the application was running, without actually impeding the application itself, without pausing the application, without impacting the customers or mm -hmm. the users of the application? We asked ourselves the question whether we can insert log statements uh, on the fly. Uh, when the application is running, uh, without again having to write any lines of code, wow. and um, and and so keeping that in mind, we we uh, we start we 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 built the uh, the debugger, the Stackdriver debugger experience. Uh, the best way to think of the Stackdriver debugger experience is let's take one of these specific instance of applications here, and here we've got um, let's let's look at this uh, we, we've got what we have highlighted here in in the relevant in the past view of mm -hmm. the stack trace is um, a specific file name uh, and a line number and that's that's highlighted to you as a link as a handy link if you click on that we pop open the debugger and what is happening right now is the debugger is trying to take a snapshot of that application as it's running in real time and i think it already as we were speaking it already took this ah. snapshot and and specifically, what what uh, what what happens here is no matter where the next time this code is executed, no matter if let's say we have, I think this application has multiple instances mm -hmm. uh, run uh, run uh, is running on multiple in, in instances. Um, it doesn't matter when this occurs next. It's gonna it's gonna basically capture the snapshot and bring it all back into this debug view. Wow. So you don't even have to pick, this is my special instance I want to debug. That's right. It's my entire application. It's your entire application. It can run on one instance. It can run uh, on 100,000 different instances. There's no problem at all. That's incredible. Uh, we, we will scale completely without, uh, with, without any problem. Um, and you can also add things like uh, regular expressions, which have to evaluate to true. So you, can, uh, you, you could imagine uh, taking a snapshot when a specific condition occurs or mm -hmm. when a specific uh, expression evaluates to true, uh, because you don't want to be taking snapshots for every time that uh, that code occurs. It's when that code occurs and the user equals Jeff, you can totally do that. Wow. And, 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 and when you do that, you instantly are able to capture the application state. We can also go insert um, lo logs into, um, into, the, uh, into the application logs by a simple command, and you can do that through the Cloud Shell. So you basically click on the Cloud Shell as, uh, as you're used to, and then uh, we have uh, very simple debug commands handy that mm -hmm. you can use, and, and you can just go ahead and insert logs there. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing that we also noticed was uh, developers really like to look at their logs uh, in conjunction with their source code. So not only can you navigate your source code, which is automatically selected for you, the right version number and the uh, application uh, right, right version number and file name is auto automatically selected for you. But we also show you the relevant logs in this, and you can use the same things like filtering that you're used to uh, in the previous view. You can also look at the various snapshots um, that are there that have uh, that um, that I've taken before, or you can see the snapshot that have been taken by other users um, uh, trying to, uh, trying to debug this application. With everything that we've done in Stackdriver, you can share the same view. We, we, we enable deep linking into our experience. So I could just copy this. It's as simple as copying and pasting this URL. So I could just copy this URL and send it over to you. And when you open it, you would see the exact same view with the exact same highlights with the same snapshot summary. So that uh, when we decide to uh, debug an application together, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's as simple as just copy pasting this URL. And that's something that I traditionally have to say, OK, come on over to my box. That's right. I've got it just right. Hope I don't hit refresh or something. That's right. That's incredible. It's pretty cool. We like it. 
Well, seeing all these amazing features, I would love to get these integrated with Cloud Foundry. Let's do it. Let's jump right into it and see how we can get this thing set up. So I've got a Go application. Um, this is running in Cloud Foundry, as I said. Um, can you show me how I can get it set up with the debugger and error reporting? So one of the first things to do is we, we first bring the, the, the we first, uh, your, your application is written in Go, correct? Mm -hmm. So what we'll want to do is uh, bring in the debugger agent for Go. For that, you'll need to modify how your app starts uh, to run this agent instead of running your app directly. And, and so at this point, maybe we should, we should do it. All right. All right. So I'm going to pull in the debugger agent to the same folder my project's in. And I will modify my proc file, which specifies how my application starts. Instead of running the application directly, I will just run that debugger agent instead. Yeah. And next, what you'll need to do is provide some kind of source context for the debugger so that it knows which specific application version uh, it's, it, it's working with. And this can be generated with a simple gcloud command. OK. That sounds like an excellent job for a continuous integration, continuous delivery sort of environment. But exactly. I'll go ahead and just put it in my deploy script for now. So how does permissioning work here? So if you're, if you're running your application in GCP, um, the, uh, the debugger will pick up all the service account credentials um, for, for that virtual machine it's running on. But if you're not running on GCP, um, you can provide credentials to the service account through a simple environment variable. Well, my Cloud Foundry is running on GCP. So I guess I'll get all those service account credentials automatically. But for folks who are running on other cloud providers, we'll put information in the example application on how to set up credentials. Great. Um, so now uh, for the integration part, so we pull in error reporting. For the Go version, you'll want to place an error.catch uh, in, in a differ statement whenever you want to catch and report FANX. OK. So I'm going to pull in the SDK with Go vendor. And then hop into my program and import the SDK. I'm just going to set up a variable to hang on to the errors client. OK, and just initialize that. So my application is running with an HTTP stack that supports middleware. So I'm just going to paste in an empty piece of middleware. And in there is where I'm going to put that defer errors.catch statement. So if an error occurs higher up in my HTTP stack in the handler, it'll get caught at this point and report it out. So with that in place, all I need to do is install my middleware. And that's it? That's it. Uh, so now you can view the errors that are generated, and you can start debugging in production. Wow. Well, let's pop open my web app and see if there are any bugs. Excellent. So I'll hop into my application and say hello. And nothing happens. So I happen to be trying this out in production, but how would I know if a user hit this and I hadn't done that? So there are two ways you could, you could be notified or you could observe, you, you would know that a user hits it. One, you could be notified by getting, um, Stackdriver has the ability for you to subscribe to new errors occurring and you can prompt it through an email. Or if you're using one of our uh, mobile apps, then um, you could get a mobile notification as well. Um, you could, of course, always keep go to the dashboard page, uh, the error reporting page, and view it. So why don't, if you said that the error has occurred right now, we should probably go look at your, um, your inbox and see if there's a notification waiting there. OK. So I'll hop into my email here. And it looks like I do have a new mail from Stackdriver. OK. Uh -huh. Let's check it out. So it looks like the errors occurred. And I'll just check out the details. So on this page, it looks like I can see it's a new error. Uh, it's occurred a few times here with different names because I've been playing around a little bit. And I can expand this and see my request right there. That was that hello web I said. I can see it in the request. So I better hop in the debugger to see what, what is going on because I thought I had some great code here. Apparently, we've got some issues. Click on that stack trace. And I'm going to select my application. Just navigate to that specific request. OK, so I know that my key and value must be empty because I'm throwing a panic there. Um, so I'll just set a breakpoint 
above that so I can see where data they're getting. Okay, so I'm getting that from vars. You can expand vars, and vars has values in there. It's got two, it's got a key, and it's got a value. But it, why is it empty? Ah, okay, so it looks like when I'm looking at vars, I'm pulling out k and v. But my actual request, sort of the form side of it, says key and value. Well, that's embarrassing. Crazy it made it through code review. But now that I've seen a request with real user data, I should be able to fix it pretty easily. Thank you, Sharat. No problem. And thank you all for watching. Check out my application in the description. This is a Cloud Foundry application written in Go with the Stackdriver debugger and error reporting ready to go. See if you can find any bugs. Thanks for watching. It's been a great series. If you've missed a few of our videos, make sure to check out our playlist for in more information about Cloud Foundry and Google Cloud Platform. I especially recommend this video on Stackdriver. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to the Google Cloud channel. Thank you.